Hi and welcome to Temeco. In this video, we will define the term damping and some of its characteristics. We will briefly touch on topics such as energy transformation and how we could classify the level of damping of a system. By the end of this video, we expect you to have the basic understanding of this important term. Let's jump right into the subject. Maybe you've heard of damping before, but it's always good to present this definition to all of us again. Damping can be defined as the death of young seedlings as a result of a fungal infection encouraged by damp conditions. Wait, wait, what? Oh no, I think I mixed physics with my gardening notes. Let's try again. Simply speaking, damping is an attenuation, call it reduction, of the movement of an object due to friction. This means that whenever an object moves, this will experience damping. Let's exclude objects in outer vacuum space. And if no other external forces are applied, the object will eventually stop. But how does damping work? Well, easy. The kinetic energy of the object is transformed in different kind of energy. Commonly, heat, produced by the friction between the moving object and the medium where this object is immersed, water, oil, etc. If we are in the presence of such media, we talk specifically about viscous damping. But what about the friction produced by two contacting objects with relative movement with respect to each other? Yep, that's also another example of damping. Not viscous, but this is also damping. Now the boring part. With damping, it is necessary to talk about damping ratio. And the simplest way to define what is damping ratio is if we see it as a positive dimensionless number that describes how oscillations in a system decay after a disturbance. The damping ratio, usually defined with the Greek letter zeta, is an important number that will allow us to tell if a system is in one of the following four cases. If zeta is zero, then we are in the presence of an undamped system. So remember, zero ratio, zero damping. If zeta is larger than zero but smaller than one, we say that the system is underdamped. I would say under one, underdamped. You're getting it, right? If zeta is equal to one, the system is said to be critically damped. If I had to make up a mnemotechnic for this one, I would say the critically damped is only one. And finally, if zeta is larger than one, well, you guessed it, the system is overdamped. Now why is it important to know what type of system we have? Let me show you. Let's take our favorite system, the mass spring system. If we extend the mass and then release it, having information about the damping of the system will allow us to predict how the system will behave. Remember, no other external forces are acting except for the gravity. If we have an undamped system, then this friction that could stop the movement of the body is inexistent causing the body to keep moving and moving and moving and moving and moving. Okay, I think I need some damping. But you got it. An underdamped system will attenuate the movement of the mass, but it will take some time to stop it completely. Then a critically damped system, when the mass is released, you'll see that the mass stops as soon as it approaches to its rest position. Finally, an overdamped system. Here the mass will also stop immediately at its rest position, but the time to reach this rest position will feel longer than a critically damped system. You can now see the four cases in action and compare their behavior. Now you get why it's important to know the damping ratio. In another video, I will show you how we can calculate the damping ratio of the mechanical system. Hopefully, you now have a clearer understanding of what is damping and how it affects the behavior of a mechanical system. Thanks for watching and see you soon.